One, two, one, two, three, four.
everyone, Tony Winston here from Jazz Piano College, working a little bit on the song Killer Joe today. And, you know, I'm playing along with the Jamie Abersold track, and there's some really good piano chords on there. And I, I want to go back and listen and find out what they were. So let me just see who's playing. Okay, Jamie Abersold is on piano. I like his chords. <laughs> I thought that's what it was. He's suspending those chords a little bit. did one other thing I need to catch. It was one of those things where you go up, like using the diminished scale, going like, and he does it at a place where I didn't expect it. For some reason, I thought he was using like, well, this song is interesting because it has a big climactic point where instead of a two, five, one, you know, going back to C, it's a three, six, going back to the one. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense except for the fact that it sounds great. So uh, look at this core, uh, look at this song a little bit. I think this was probably the first song I ever learned this particular chord on. Right. I mean, I was a teenager, I'm sure, or, you know. And I did not know what this chord was or why it made any sense, uh, but I just knew it was really great. And I, uh, you know, I heard some other guy do it, and I, had, I just had to know it. And he showed it to me. I couldn't figure it out on my own for some reason. And I believe they were doing this song too, Killer Joe, and he was on the B3. So you can play those chords. And I don't have the sheet music, so I'm not sure if I have the melody right. So I'm going to talk about how to improvise over that section a little bit. But let's analyze the middle section because that's really kind of cool. So the first chord is E minor 7 flat 5. And that's basically the same chord you've been on here. You've been playing this C 13. And really, you know, if you do E minor 7 flat 5, it's really the same chord. But the bass player goes right to E. So it's going to sound like a different chord. And I guess it is a different chord just has the same notes in it. So. Now the next chord is the A. So it's like a three chord going to a six chord. And it's a dominant chord. And it always sounds like uh, he's using, you know, this kind of voicing. Which is, you know, what I call the diminished scale. You know, you might hear him do those chords. But it's definitely that sound. It's not like the A altered or A unaltered. It's this A7 flat 9 with the 13, which is a great you know, shape for supporting the diminished scale. So the first two chords, E minor 7, flat 5, A7. And then it goes to really nice change here, E flat minor. And you know, add the 9, add the 11, whatever you want. And then go right, and that, that's like a 2-5. You know, it's, we've got 3-6 in this song. We've got some flat 3, flat 6, and we've got some 2-5. Do we have any 2-5? No, we don't have any 2-5. So we got to A flat 7. See, there I'm using that same shape. 
with an A flat chord. And then it just moves up a half step. So you got A unaltered, back to A flat unaltered. And then like an E minor, this time it's not the flat five. And you know, you can add the nine, the 11 to it. And then get to the A unaltered. And then, you know, I mentioned Monty Alexander the other day. You have to listen to his first album, which is called Spunky. He does so many of these things. These humongous glissandos that just, you know, say you were doing a solo in this section, you know, and you were getting pretty into it, building it towards a climax. give your audience the orgasm they've so richly deserved there. You know, it's a, it's a pretty uh, climactic part of the song. And, you know, E minor going to A7 does not exactly take you to, to C, but by this time you've heard it enough times that, you know, it's, it's starting to sound pretty good to you. So anyway, I'm sorry, I got a little carried away there. But uh, let's go back into the song a little bit. So we got C7 and, and B flat 7. You know, that's the thing. That kind of thing, right? And it's an unaltered chord here because you have a, a 9 and a 13, but that's not a flat 9 or a flat 13, so we say it's unaltered, unaltered. And what scale is going to work with this? Well, this scale, all right, you know, I'll, a lot of times I say the blue scale is this. But the third is such an important part, and, you know, you can also do these little things, so A, you know, is not officially in the blue scale, and same with up here. So there's kind of this other blue scale like this, but, you know, real blues players just, I don't think they really think about it like that very much. They just, you know, know the notes they want to play, and they just play them. So I would say on, on both these chords, you can use this blue scale. You know, it sounds good over either chord. On the C, you know, all this works. All right? Now, it works pretty good on the B flat, too, because that's like a sharp 11, all right? Which fits in with an unaltered uh, chord pretty well, but that's another story here, so. Now look, there's some cool little shapes. And then, all right, so what is this scale now I'm doing? It's kind of like this. Okay, that actually is B flat Lydian dominant, but I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just kind of know those are the right notes. And then back to the blue scale here. And you know, if I think I can keep getting away with blue scale, I'll keep doing it. But if I want something a little jazzier, I'll go into that scale. And you know, I should have a better lick on this. And I kind of talked about this the other day with, uh, with the uh, diminished scale when I was talking about that. You know, there's, there's this, these little parts of the blues scale all through the diminished scale. So you just find them so useful. Look at how many places you can do it in this song. That's not really the same, but this one is. And of course, you know. So at least four different spots in there you could do it. And you could probably try a few other ones just to see what the, if they would work. Okay, quickly through the bridge. I uh, don't want to make this too long of a video. Half, half diminished chord, ninth is common, but I don't know, I just, I kind of like Lydian mode better. I said Lydian again, Locrian mode. All right, that's the F major scale, All right? And then diminished. And that's a nice change from the, into the E flat minor. 
It's really cold here for today, so my hands are not moving very well today. Um, and then, you know, that's like an E flat minor to A flat, so you just change this one thing, and it's mostly the same scale. You can use the same scale, then just go up a step to A. These are mixolydian scales, easy to, easy to learn. You could make them a little more exotic, but I think they sound great just like that. And then, all right, this is, I use Dorian here because it's, now it's the unaltered E, e minor chord, so. Because you want it to sound like a 2-5 going to D, but you go to C. And that's, that's, that's what makes this song great. To quote a phrase, that's what makes this song great. All right, let me think, a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, Ken Hewitt, yes, I forgot to mention him the other day. Yes, he's a great YouTuber, and I love his channel, and uh, a very interesting guy. It tells some good stories, too. Hey, that's going to wrap it for me today, folks. Uh, I appreciate all my new subscribers, especially over on my Patreon page, but uh, thanks for everybody who's been tuning in lately. And uh, I've got some interesting things. I'm, I'm really busy today. I've got some rehearsals for this executive talent show. You know, it's like when these companies have their employees. I don't know. Anyway, it's 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 a big gig, all day rehearsal plus the plus the job plus another rehearsal tonight. So uh, I'm gonna do a be back real soon. Thanks.